All right. I hope everybody can uh, can hear me loud and clear and can see my screen. So welcome to uh, today's webinar, guys. Uh, this is episode two of a four webinar series. Today, we're going to be talking about scraping e-commerce sites. I'll show you a little bit about uh, how I do it uh, usually and how it's done through Hexomatic. Um, if you have any questions along the way, please write them in the chat. My colleague Chris is here and he'll happy to he'll be happy to answer them. And uh, if we have time at the end, whoever would like can you know stay on and then we'll do a couple of questions uh, in person. Um, we'll keep this into that 15 minute time frame that we've set up uh, in advance. Um, so let's start rolling. So I thought uh, the easiest way to show you guys uh, how we scrape e-commerce sites um, is to do the two bigger ones. So Amazon and eBay, right? So those are the two that we're going to show you today. Um, and each of them have a different flow. So you'll actually learn both flows and then you can kind of take it from there. Uh, let's start from eBay. So how we want to scrape eBay is uh, very quite simple. So when you log into Hexomatic, this is what you're going to see on your screen, the dashboard. From here, I'm going to go into the scraping templates. The good thing is that we already have an eBay template ready to go. So you don't have to actually set anything up yourself. Um, when I click on the scraping templates on the left side here, I'm going to go into the search button on the top left, top right corner. I'm going to type in eBay and there it is. So that's going to be the product listing scraper. So it's ready to go. But how we use this is, um, is a little bit, um, needs a, requires just a little bit of a learning curve. So this is basically a scraper that's set, and I'll show you that. It's basically a scraper that's set to scrape uh, certain data off of the listing site of eBay, which includes things like the name of the product, the URL of the product, and of course, the price, which is crucial. Um, it's set um, using a random example. In this case, I think it's called like Nike Air Max or something like that. Um, but of course, you can feed in whatever you want to feed in. And I'll show you how you do that. So the recipe itself is set. It knows what to scrape. So imagine like the robot has already been trained to scrape certain things off of eBay. Now, all you need to do is feed it URLs so that it's scraping the correct URL. Um, how we're feeding it URLs is based on the search. So what do you want to search on eBay? So how that works is I'm going to go into workflows here. I'm going to click on create new. Um, the first things first, what I want to do is I want to give it a data input. So I want to tell it what to scrape. Now, how do I decide what this data input is? So just as an example, I went to ebay.com. So I'll do that once more again from, from scratch. Went to ebay.com. Let's say I want to scrape PlayStation 5 listings. So I'm typing in my keyword, in this case, PlayStation 5. I'm clicking enter. It's searching and it's finding all these different PlayStations. And this is sort of what I want to scrape, right? The names, the prices, the URLs, and so on. Um, just one quick note here. Uh, in order for it to be more efficient, instead of scraping it in this, where it's like a list, one, two, three, like in a line, what you do is on the right, right corner right here, a little button, you click on that and there's gallery view. And if you click on gallery view, it'll actually give you more listings per page because it kind of shortens it so it's like four different products here on one line and then i'm just going to grab that url copy it i'm going to paste it here as data input so that is the page that i want to be scraped and then a little plus sign so data input is done plus sign from here on the top on the right corner here they're scraping recipes there's a pre-built recipe eb product listings which i just showed you from the template i'm going to click on that it's going to ask you what's the source, and then I'm going to say, go take it from data input. So basically take that URL, which I just fed, PlayStation 5 search, and then scrape it based on how you know how to scrape it. And I'm going to click on continue, run now. And basically that's it. Um, once you do that, it's actually going to run, and it's going to scrape everything off of that page. Um, that's going to run very quickly, done. It's already ready to go export and i'm going to show you the results all righty so data input i put that that playstation 5 and as you can see here open that up for you guys new playstation portal remote new playstation portal remote new playstation 5 ps5 displacement and so on so it just keeps going on and on and on and on right um that's the sort of the name of the product that's the URL. So the URLs will change based on the product. And those are the prices right there. 
So the scraper already knows what to scrape. All you need to do is feed it URLs. Now, in order not to feed it URLs one by one, you know, copy paste into that data input like here, and you want to kind of search and then paste and then run and then search and then paste and then run, you can automate that process as well. So here's what I do. Instead of starting with data input, I'm just going to delete these off. Instead of starting from data input, what I'm starting from here is import. I'm going to import from Google Sheets. Okay. So same idea, but instead of me pasting the URLs, I'm saying, you know what, go take it from my Google Sheets account. Now my Hexomatic is linked with my Google Sheets account, my Google Drive account, Google One, that's my name of my account. Which spreadsheet? I'm going to say, um, let's go to eBay URLs. I already had that preset and I'll show you that sheet here, sheet one. And I want you to import A, that's the column. That's where all my URLs are, right? And I don't, I don't want you to include the header. So here is just basically a list of all of the URLs that I want it to scrape. And then I'm doing a plus sign. And again, scraping recipe. I'm going to grab that listing, select source, import A, update and run. And that's it. So what this will do, and this is what I like to do, a little tip and trick here for you guys. What I like to do is I set this up, and because this is linked to a specific sheet on my Google Drive, throughout the week, when I'm looking at different products and I'm looking at looking listings on eBay, I just copy paste those URLs into my Google Sheet in like a big line. And then I schedule for this work workflow to run every Friday at 6 p.m. So basically when the week is done, I schedule it every Friday at 6 p.m. So throughout the week, I, I'll just be feeding in URLs as I go along. And then every Friday evening, it'll run automatically. And every Monday morning, I come to work and I have all of my product listings ready to go. Prices, names, so on and so forth. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, I really like to use this a lot. Let me show you how a bigger flow would look like. So again, same idea. I feed it in. Um, and so this is like what the output would look like in a broader sense. Right, so this is the PlayStation 5 again, and it ran. I also added here, I want to know what, what condition the product is in. Brand new, unused, unopened, undamaged item is original packaging or blah, blah, blah. And seller info. So things like positive feedback, how many items are sold. So again, these are things that you can kind of add on more and more and more as you go along. And then I also, except for PlayStation 5, I also had a Nike run. Here it is, Nike Air Max was the keyword, and I ran Nike Air Max, and it, this happened automatically. So it was running first the PlayStation 5, pulling all the data, then it's running the Nike Air Max, pulling all the data, and then it's running the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth products that you want. So just using those keywords as input, um, it'll just kind of rotate around, and it'll add more and more and more um, throughout the week. So that's how I like to do it. Um, and it's pretty, pretty straightforward. And again, you can add as many things as you want here as you go along. But the key is that the base product scraper already exists. So the title, the page URL, and the price you're going to get, it's in the templates. So just make sure to click on that scraping templates and go to eBay and it's ready to go. And all you have to do is then just feed in URLs. Um, from there, then you can go more and more and more complex as you go along. Okay. So that's sort of the eBay side of things, but what about Amazon? Amazon is a little bit of a different animal. Uh, as I'm sure you guys are aware, Amazon is not the most open database, if you will. But the good thing is that we don't really need to scrape Amazon per se straight up. We have an Amazon integration already built into Hexomatic. So for here, you go to automations on the left side. I'm just going to search for Amazon as the keyword and just show you the different things that you can do. So it's product data. So this is going to pull all the product data, which includes price, name, description, et cetera. Uh, product reviews. This will download all of the reviews of that product. Um, you can do a product search on Amazon directly from Hexomatic. So in this case, you don't have to actually search on eBay, then copy paste the URL. Uh, you can actually search directly in Hexomatic for certain products. And of course, seller finder, which is information about the seller uh, on the Amazon side of things. So how you build the workflow from here is, um, again, I'm going to go to workflow, create new. I'm just going to uh, type in Amazon. So if I go to product data, just to show you how this works, any product data, 
data is going to ask for the ASIN number. Every Amazon product has an ASIN number as to how they code their products. Um, and if you have the ASIN number and it's just one product, you can just copy paste it here and go. If you have a list of ASIN products, just like we did with eBay, you can do data input, put in the ASIN numbers and your Google Sheets, attach the Google Sheets and then run this and it'll give you all the product data. But let's say you don't have that or the other and just like eBay, we need to start with a search. So I'm just going to type in search, Amazon product search, keyword again, I'm just going to do PlayStation 5. So this is going to go to Amazon.com, language English, country US. So this is Amazon.com. It's going to type in PlayStation 5, and I'm just going to say, you know what, bring in the first 10 results. Obviously, you can scale this up to 700. So each run, you can pull 700 results using that specific keyword in a specific country. I'm going to say sort it by feature, the relevance for high to low, so however you want it to be sorted. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to do relevance. Featured usually has a uh, advertising component to it, and I'm looking for organic. And then this is just going to go in, search for plant, and take the first 10 results, right? And then I'm going to do plus sign. So that's the first step. Second step, now I want to pull the product data. I'm going to go to Amazon product data. Very straightforward. ASIN is asking for the ASIN. In this case, I'm just saying take the ASIN numbers from that product search that we already did. So scroll down here. There should be Amazon data ASIN. Click. Okay. So once again, very, very, very easy. It's going to go to Amazon.com. It's going to search for PlayStation 5. It's going to pull the first 10 results from the US, sorted by relevance. It's going to take all of those ASIN numbers, feed it into product data, and then the product data is going to pull all of the product information for those first 10 results. Continue, run now. It's that straightforward. Very easy to set up because, again, it's pre-built into the system. Now, I already ran that one, so here it is on the bottom here. I'm just going to show you what that would look like, the results. Um, so PlayStation 5, that's the path, that's the domain. Uh, this is the name of the product. K case club carrying case fits PS5, la la la, and so on and so forth. That's the pricing that it has. Those are the ASIN numbers. Um, and then it just keeps going. So reviews, how many ratings does it have, the star ratings, um, let's go top here, uh, the check URL, uh, product ranking, product group, product position, product title, product details, right? So it's like the description and everything. Um, it, it has, if it has a parent ASIN, sometimes products are sub products of other products. So you can find the connection, the link between the two, all product ASINs, um, product price from to, if there's a range, sometimes it has a range. Uh, the currency of the product um, is Amazon choice, yes or no. Uh, the ranking position and so on and you can understand how much data that you can pull just in one shot product descriptions and so on okay so again it's pretty pretty straightforward again because it's pre-built in now one of the really cool things that i like to do with this amazon stuff and because amazon is pre-built you can also scrape the reviews the actual reviews so how that would look like is you would again start from anything that you would create new workflow Start from Amazon search. Um, let's just say Nike Air Max, whatever your your keyword is. Um, then let's do just five results, just to keep it quick. But again, you can do 700 results if you want. So the first five products that's going to pull. And then I'm going to do the Amazon review scraper. So I'm saying, you know what, go grab the reviews. ASIN, it's going to ask for it. Again, pull the ASIN from that search that I've already done. How many do you want to pull? How many reviews do you want to actually download per product? I'm doing 10 right now, but you can do up to 1,000 per product in one run. Language, country is fine. And then what I really like to do, if you want to get a little bit more uh, technical, what I do on top of this is I run an AI sentiment analysis which is again, pre-built in AI sentiment analysis. It's gonna ask for the source. In this case, the source is gonna be the review, right? So I want to actually read the review. In this case, Amazon product review text, Amazon product review text. It's not a URL, it's a text, language is English. So what this is gonna do is the AI is actually gonna read every single one of those reviews that you scrape, and it's gonna tell you whether it's positive, negative, neutral, and so on.
So it'll give you kind of an overview of where you are. And because it's in a CSV file, you can kind of filter it based on positive or negative and kind of figure out how many more are positive, how many more are negative, actually read the reviews uh, and understand. If you want to be even more complicated, you can add Gemini, like uh, ChatGPT or Gemini on top of this, have the AI analyze those reviews and tell you like the weaknesses and uh, of your competitors um, and so on. So you can kind of keep adding more and more complexity. Um, but because I already ran this workflow, I want to show it to you. I have that result as well, just so you can see kind of what that output would look like. Here it is. So that's the Amazon search, the Amazon product review, and then the sentiment analysis, export results. Let's see what we got. Alrighty, PlayStation 5 was still the keyword. I'm just gonna, so this is number one, right? And if I, I have a very heavy file here. If I scroll down, so all of these are gonna be reviews in these rows, that's why you can't see them. I'll show you on the right side. And then that's number two and number three. So I'm just gonna scroll to the right here. All right, so here are the reviews. If you're looking for a top of the line travel case for your PS5, look no further. I'm a truck driver by trade who is constantly traveling to blah, blah, blah. And then that's the sentiment analysis on top. Clearly positive, clearly positive, mixed, clearly negative, clearly negative, clearly positive. And then you keep going on. Pros, cons, and again, it's reading clearly negative, clearly positive, mixed, and so on. So it's taking all of the, now again, I only put 10. So it's only pulling the first 10 reviews. That's why it's the short list. You can pull thousands of reviews if you want, um, hypothetically, and then run that sentiment analysis on top. And then you can probably feed that the same these into ChatGPT and have that automatically read it and give you some sort of output or some sort of analysis. So basically, Basically, those are the two key things. eBay and Amazon is what I showed, but there's a bunch of other things that you can do with it. Um, that's it for today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, I'll see you guys in two weeks time for episode three and then another two weeks after that for episode four. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, I'll run through the questions right now and kind of go through them. Uh, but this was it for our webinar for today. And thank you very much for your time. Whoever has to leave, please do so. I respect your time. I appreciate you. Uh, whoever wants to kind of hang out, hang back and ask some questions, please write them in the chat and I'll be more than happy to get to them. But thank you very much, guys, for your time. I'll see you in a couple of weeks.